Uh, Chelsea came in, he had great success. I mean, uh, Juventus and, and obviously Inter uh, lately, it was very short, but uh, at Chelsea he came in, he had great success, but then uh, the rumour was the players got a bit fed up with it. Yeah. You know, and the, 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 the way it was going about it and the antics on the sideline and, and sort of all that. Uh, and listen, when, when Mourinho came in at Spurs, it was all smiles to start with, don't forget, and yes. they, played, they played some good football. Yeah. Got some results. He Deli was happy. Ali's twin, all that. Sort and of then, and then things started to take a turn for the worse because things unravel when your squad's not good enough. You get results for a certain amount of period, but then no matter what you do, the bigger teams will always be the bigger teams, the better squads, the better players. And you can coach the hind legs off a donkey sometimes, but you just can't get it done. And I think that's the frustration that I think Conte will have eventually get here. I think he'll get a a, a tune out of them. Right. Uh, to some Short term. To yeah. some extent. But unless, as Frank said, they go and spend, spend, spend and try and match these other teams, which we know they certainly haven't had the appetite for, for so far, it's going to be difficult. I personally think he's a good coach, but I think this is the wrong appointment for Spurs. I think Spurs need to take a longer-term view. And that, for me, I, I, I mean, there are many candidates, but one that sticks out, and I think he will go somewhere, is Graham Potter at Brighton. I think what he did, I think it was Osterens uh, in, in Scandinavia with a tiny budget was amazing. I think what he's done at Brighton, and I thought it was harsh when Hutton got sacked because I thought, my God, Brighton, what, what, you know, this could go wrong. But they said, no, we've, we've had enough of being just hard to beat and finishing fourth bottom. We want to be better. Last year, they played really well, but were lightweight up front. This season, they've started really well and they're much more of a threat. I think longer term... He works with less money. Mm. I think he's got a longer-term view. And I think for Spurs, that, for me, would be a better fit and a much more patient way to go about it than just saying, let's fight some fires for a year or two and then see where we are. Uh, according to reports, it's Conte. Who, who no, they, I, I, I know that, but I'm just saying... I, I, to go I personally think that's a better way to look at right, it. Right, right. Alessandro, obviously, you've worked with Conte. Oh, you think of him and he kind of lives up to this stereotype of being angry, moody... Hard to kind of get along with. Is that true in real life? <laughs> <laughs> he's a guy. He's a coach that pretend, pretend a lot from uh, from uh, his player. That's that's for sure. And uh, he's a guy that you know spend a lot of time on the field, outside the field. That's the only question mark that I have. When you when you have a guy like him, you prefer to start at the beginning of the season. So you have to spend time on the preseason to adapt not only the players, but the game that you want to play with the players and, and the opposite. Because he needs time to de develop what he has in mind and he's pretending a lot. So when you have somebody that's pretending every day, every minute of the, of the, <laughs> of the day, uh, constantly not satisfied if you win a game or two or three in a row and move for the fourth, that's how you can become a little annoying for, for the players. But, I mean, the last season that he had, he had an incredible success, including an Inter. Mm. And, yeah, it's true that after one or two seasons, it's, it's very tough to continue with him. But it's also true that the, the teams that he coached after him, they're still doing well. Because Juve did amazing, Chelsea continued to do great, and Inter this year... Still a great team with a big possibility to win the league again. Stevie brought up the fan, obviously, but in, in the past, he's been given money to spend. Lukaku, of course, just last year at Inter Milan. There'll be no opportunity, Alessandro, for that to happen at Spurs. Not certainly to that level. How quickly will his patience run out if he doesn't get the money, doesn't get the players that he demands? Well, it depends the ambition of the Spurs. I mean, this year, if, if Conte is going to accept and they're going to go through, they need to find a way to, to stay together. Next year, it will be the one that determinate what they're going to do. And from my point of view, they don't need Lukaku because they have Kane. I mean, Kane is one of the best strikers in the world. And so, that's, yeah, you need to work on some other areas from my point of view. That's that's is another is another thing, but you know the environment that the the Spurs environment. I think they need to end up in winning something as soon as possible. You know, it's a great club. You know, with a big potential, new stadium, 
great fans. I mean, you need to achieve something. And that's why probably they moved so fast with the Espirito Santo and tried to find a new, a new coach. They, they surely, Spurs, are better off with a Graham Potter than a Conte. Because right now, every single thing that happens in Tottenham is all over, the, all over the news, all over the paper, certainly in the football world. Conte's just going to bring even more spotlight. Mm. And Conte's not going to have a chance to get things right because it's constantly be going... <laughs> the headlights are going to be on it. You know, you bring in a Potter... It's kind of like what you did with Pochettino. You brought in Pochettino knowing that he did well with a, with a team like Southampton who aren't expected to do anything. And then it was kind of a slow burner and eventually they get to the Champions League. Surely that's better for Spurs. Because if way, Conte comes in, the, the spotlight's just going to be even brighter. But in all fairness to him as well, he's, you know, that budget at Brighton, his team play, he, he, you know, it's not just because they're off the back of a, a, a very good result at Anfield. It's a generalisation of a couple of years at least, work that he's put in there. And they play. They play from the back. They, they get it on the deck. I mean, if they'd, if they'd had a decent uh, a bit of punch up front last year, they would have been much higher up than they were. Mm. And obviously, they've started great. I just think longer term... I just think Spurs are bouncing from one thing to the next. We had, we had all these managers talked about in the summer. Then we had the, the debacle with Harry Kane. And listen, Harry Kane... Do you think he... Do you think he thinks because Antonio Conte is going to come in, all of a sudden, oh, everything's rosy in the garden again? Right. Oh, oh, Tottenham are going to be challenging now. We've got Antonio Conte. And, oh, I'm, not, I'm going to lift my chin off the floor and start playing a bit better. No, I don't think so. I mean, he might, might get a few more goals and look a bit happier short term. But, but he knows the gap between them and the real big guys is huge. Millions and millions and millions of dollars. And if Daniel Levy and Joe Lewis, the owner, don't want to put it in, and nothing to this point suggests that they will. We have a, a manager who has shown repeatedly that he's a very good coach, but he's a very agitated man when he doesn't get the money and he sees others are. That's the problem with this appointment. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.